who made it onto the podium in the last race uh, earlier in the day, has now been moved forward onto the second row of the grid. He uh, obviously moves up into sixth place after it has been uh, announced that Cambobier will not take part in the Medallia Superbike race following that crash uh, earlier on today. Uh, you may recognize his umbrella boy, that uh, is Rubens Aus, uh, the former Supersport uh, World Championship runner-up and uh, multiple race winner, former MotoGP uh, star as well. And uh, he's uh, been roped in to uh, holding the umbrella. Got a chance to speak to Ruben a little bit earlier, and he said that uh, he was uh, definitely enjoying his time uh, here in the championship. We may even see him on a bagger next year, who knows? On the uh, middle of the second row of the grid uh, will be the same. In fact, the first five riders on the grid remain exactly as they were uh, prior uh, to, obviously, that incident in uh, race number two, uh, the first race of today. PJ Jacobson on the Titleist Cycle BMW. All eyes now, really, for a BMW podium. Very much going to be on the 99. Uh, Matthew Miles uh, also roped into holding the uh, uh, umbrella there as well. So uh, PJ Focus just listening to some music. Uh, so we're not going to disturb him too much. Let's move forward then into the fourth position on the grid, Richie Escalante. Uh, just down here he will head row number four and uh, Richie holding uh, his own uh, umbrella and uh, alongside him is uh, also uh, Chris Ulrich so uh, maybe we can get a quick word uh, with Chris I never like to uh, disrupt the riders too much on the grid uh, Chris uh, uh, Richie holding his umbrella uh, that's a that's a new one but obviously you're coming uh, onto the grid uh, there you go there you go didn't need much encouragement. You've done that before. Uh, great ride from Tyler Scott. I know we're building up to Super Sport, but that's a, that really is going to boost the team coming into this one. Yeah, it's good. It's good to get start winning, you know, and get going. So it's uh, they made a change um, in warm up, and that that went the right direction for him. The bike was wheeling less, and and he could rotate it better through the middle of the corner. So he's getting better drives, which you saw that on TV. That wasn't the bike. I mean, it was the rider on the bike opening the gas earlier. But anyway. Um, the uh, yeah, it was good. It's good. He's starting to communicate what he needs better, and we're turning everything around, and he's starting to win races. So, definitely, a man, super pumped to just. I don't know. I got a new heart rate monitor watch, and so he's watching my heart rate spike when that's going on when he's looking back and doing all that stuff. But it's good momentum for the team and morale for everybody. But I also, you know, we're talking about the Superbike boys, like you know Richie fighting and clawing his way up there to. Uh, um, closer and closer towards the podium. We've made so many improvements with the motorcycle. He's made so many improvements with his riding and it's it's really gelling together and we're moving forward. So, um, but I mean, there's there's so many fast dudes and so many good bikes in this category that it's, it, you know, you gotta be you gotta be working all the time. And um, just good. It's, I'm happy to see both Brandon and Richie moving up, moving forward. And, and uh, I mean, Richie had a legitimate shot at that podium. So it's, that's exciting. Yeah, it absolutely is. Richie Escalante will start fourth, and uh, as Chris Ulrich said, team principal. Uh, unfortunate that Richie went down, but uh, he is now showing podium potential and big steps too for Brandon Pash. Uh, Matthew Skoltz will start third. Jake Gagne will start from the middle of the front row. He, of course, looking for three victories. And if Jake Gagne wins this race and Josh Herrin finishes less uh, than uh, second position, uh, then basically Jake Gagne will be a three-time back-to-back champion. So uh, all eyes are going to be on Jake Gagne. Starting from pole position, though, once again will be Bobby Fong. And, uh, of course, he was another rider that went down. But it's been a sensational weekend for Bobby, uh, really mixing it at the front on the uh, wrench motorcycles, the ADR team. And, uh, again, he is definitely going to be in the mix. Uh, there's a nice clear view down to the turn one. Uh, and then and that little runner through turn one and two down in towards turn three and four. Gagne's led uh, both races so far today. Uh, is that going to change heading into uh, this third race? There's lots to look forward to. Lots can happen. Will we see Jake Gagne crowned as the 2023 Moto America champion? Stay with us. It's about to happen here at Pit Race. The third of three is on deck. And for some, it's been up. Final corner and the run to the checkered flag and it's got to be Gagne, two for two. This is where Jake Gagne has been superior. And for some, it's been down. Oh, no! What a Cameron Bobier, massive acceleration, nowhere to go. Can anyone stop Jake Gagne, or can he wrap up his third number one plate in a row? We find out right now from Western PA.
It's time for the Moto America AMA FIM North American Road Race Championship. This round is Moto America Superbikes at Pittsburgh, our seventh of nine for 2023 from Wampum, Pennsylvania at the famed Pittsburgh International Race Complex. Race number three, Medallia Superbike on deck, and all these racers are ready to get after it. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the broadcast. I'm Greg White, standing alongside two-time national champ Jason Pridmore. Now, Jason, it's been the Jake Gagne show so far, but we've gotten to the point where we still have two races left this season, but Gagne could wrap it up today. Yeah, none of us were even talking about championship implications coming into pit race. But Heron having a little bit of trouble yesterday, and with Cambodia having big troubles this morning, it has made it just to where Jake Gagne winning two races in a row here at pit race has put him in this point where he could win the championship as we go back and we look at race one. Number one out in front, number one gone. He takes off Bobby Fong's six. Great save yesterday. Oh. Let's hope Bobby can turn a pole position today into a result in this race. As you saw yesterday, though, Bobby was on his way forward. He would eventually get himself into second place where he would finish ahead of Matthew Skultz. As you see Skultz and Bobby and Skultz and Bobby Fong battling just behind Bobby there. So Kanye gets race one out of the way. Heron, though, you didn't hear me talk about him in that clip. Second race, Bobby Fong to the outside of Jake Gagne early, but Gagne would hold on and again start to pull away at the front. Bobby Fong close in tow. He would tip off in turn three to end his first race, but it was this crash really that has championship implications. Ashton Yates' bike loses power on the exit of the chicane. Bobier runs into the back of him. He will be a scratch from today's race. As you see, he was carted off conscious and okay, but Look who was back up front, Josh Heron, Warhorse Ducati team. They found something overnight to get this young man back up where he needs to be. And he is right there at the front, battling with P.J. Jacobson, Skoltz, and you can see just there, Escalante had just got himself into fourth place going into the last lap, slides off. And again, we're just hoping to get to Escalante on the podium. But it was a narrow victory for Gagne over P.J. Jacobson this morning. And with Josh Heron finishing third in that race, he keeps his championship hopes alive. They're slim, but they are alive. And you can see all the riders on the grid right now, which means the third member of our broadcast team, Hannah Lope, is there as well. Greg, if Jake Gagne is able to win his third race in a row this weekend, it could mean that he could win his third championship in a row. Jake, what do you need to focus on in order to maximize your time on track today? Just try to be clean, get a good start, and um, I think this is probably going to be the hottest track we've seen all weekend. It's getting hotter by the minute, uh, so just try to be smart, go have some fun. I know uh, everybody's going to be uh, pushing for the front, so just try to be smart, have some fun sliding around, and thanks to this team, this Yamaha is working great here at Pittsburgh, so thanks to the fans for coming out. Hopefully we can put on a good show and see what happens. Jake Gagne, always cool, calm, and collected. One more rider I want to talk to had a crash during race two is Bobby Fong. Bobby, it looks like the bike is ready to go. How are you feeling? Are you ready and up for the task to start from the first spot on the grid? Yeah, ready to go. This is a new race for us, so looking forward to uh, get some momentum and try to stay up front. It's going to be a long, hot race. It's going to be a little slick out there, but uh, I know my uh, Wrench R1 will be uh, what good at the end. Sounds like a plan. Bobby Fong, guys. All right, and Bobby, so talented, and uh, got himself a new... Must have talked to his sponsor, huh? Got yeah. himself a new suit. <laughs> hey, look, so. pit race is 2.78 miles. It's got eight left-handers, 11 right-handers, and it is an absolute roller coaster. And make no mistake, anytime you see a straight line, it is not a long straightaway. It's always up and down and extremely busy. Going down to turn five and coming out of turn six is critical. The rhythm between turn seven and 11 is crucial but then we have that new chicane configuration here where you got to stay clean or else you might get yourself a penalty but jay don't take my word for it let's take a look at the insta 360 track lap again thanks to Danella lewis for putting this on this is coming over on the front straightaway greg downhill all downhill and you start breaking as you go up the small hill into turn one you're going to run it wide out of here to get a direct line up over this hill on turn two you want to go over this thing wide open and hope that your electronics work great. The S is here from turns seven all the way to turns 12. A succession of lefts and rights. This is all uphill. When you go through this right, and then if you get to this next left, as you get to this next left, it falls off camber and goes away from you. And then, Greg, you talked just now about that chicane. Here it is, very tight entry on the way in. Can't make a mistake. This is where we saw the incident earlier into the last corner and back onto that front straightaway again. Thanks to Denilo Lewis for doing that for us. The Insta360 fast lap. Well, good news is 
We're less than five minutes away from a race start. This 33-year-old from California can keep this championship alive. Well, as the field is getting more and more stacked and ready to go for the race here today, Roger, uh, for Bobby Fong, pole, uh, it, that in and of itself, an absolutely remarkable achievement, an absolutely stellar lap for him. The good news, there's a good news and bad news uh, scenario for him so far today. The good news is he's really been the first guy we've seen in a while that in the opening three, four laps was able to stick right with Gagne, did not let him get away. Bad news is trying to maintain that pace, he had an off. Unfortunately, we, well, we didn't see it, uh, but he did have the off. And uh, so what's going through his mind? I mean, we saw the interview with Hannah, and he was, yeah, well, you know, this is a new race. We can get after it here. A lot of experience there. Um, what's, uh, you know, what's his path today? I think just try to do the same thing he did race two. He got a really good start. He hung on to, to Jake Gagne those first couple laps and kind of, you know, stay with uh, Jake, try to go with Jake but also see if he can't pull you away from that group behind you and then not get in that battle. But, you know, crashing, that's the great – well, <laughs> getting off the stand there was a little bit of an issue. Well, but maybe you got it out of the way early this time. That's yeah. a great thing about having another race, you know, get out there. And yeah. it's a bummer when you crash, but it, you get to get out there and go again. Well, we've talked about it before. The great ones can compartmentalize and go, yeah, that was that was uh, miles and miles ago, even though it was recent, and just get their head into what they're going to have to do right now. Uh, obviously, with Cambobier not in the mix, uh, it elevates everybody. Josh Heron, uh, obviously, that can help him in terms of keeping this championship alive here, obviously, and get a report that Ashton Yates not on the grid either. So uh, maybe uh, they, had, uh, I, they had said it was a throttle problem when he clipped that for entry curb it knocked the throttle cable loose, and when he went to throttle, there was nothing there, and that's when uh, Cameron got into him. So maybe that problem is not fixable, or they're not comfortable with the potential fix. Don't want to risk anybody. Yeah, and also Richie Escalante, we've seen how close he was to the podium. Yes. You know, that race, too. So that had to do a lot for his confidence. He's riding really well this weekend. And I think that's the race we've been waiting for. And I think now he's got to feel like he has a real shot at the podium this third race. Yeah, he's just shown great speed here. So uh, this could be a very interesting podium at the end of it. And there is the potential that we could have a three-time champion in Jake Gagne when this one's over, too. So let's find out how it plays out. Medallia Superbike coverage is brought to you by... Medallia, the pioneer in customer and employee experience. By Dunlop, the official tire of the Moto America Championship Series. By Steel Commander Corp, a leading steel building manufacturer offering expertise, innovation, and a dedication to quality. And by Geico Motorcycle. Visit geico.com to see how easy covering your ride can be. Back at Pittsburgh International Race Complex, Medallia Superbike race number three right here in Wampum, Pennsylvania. Tons of fans on hand to check it out. Are they going to be treated to Jake Gagne wrap it up number three? Let's take a look at the starting grid because we have a couple of absentee racers. It's Fong, Gagne, and Skult, so the same front row we've had for the first two. And then we have Escalante, P.J. Jacobson, and Josh Heron there inside row number two. Back to row three. I just didn't see Ashton Yates on the grid just now, Greg, so yeah, I didn't see him. Brandon Posh and J.D. Beach. Good run this morning from J.D. Let's see if he can continue to improve. Gillum Alexander and Lampkin there on row number four. And we're gonna have Benjamin Smith, the Silva, Flinders, Vanilla Lewis, and Giannato. Obviously, really sad, but we're not gonna see Cameron Bobier out there. Nope, no Cameron Bobier. Hopefully, long term, he's gonna be just fine. After that incident, he had Looks a gash like above his forehead. Looks like Corey Alexander's coming down pit lane as well. Oh, he certainly yeah, I is. Just, I just saw him accelerating. It looks like he's coming down pit lane, so Corey Alexander will not be taking his spot on the grid either. As you, uh, man, it's been a frustrating weekend for this guy this weekend. This, he won race last year, or maybe a couple of the stock thousand races here, and uh, yeah, it's just been been they a frustrating had, weekend. They had to build a new bike for him though, coming into this weekend as well. They did. So, but back to what's going to happen here in Medallia Superbike race number three. Bobby Fong on the wrench motorcycles is your pole sitter. And he gets to do it one more time. Can he finally get a whole shot? It's been number one all weekend long. We'll see if Gagne can get it done again. 17 laps on deck. When these red lights go out, we're rolling. Here we go. 
Gagne with another great launch right in the middle of your screen. He leads us up and over the hill, and it's going to be Gagne with the whole shot again. Yeah, Heron got a good jump from row two, that inside. He didn't get pinched off, which was good. He's going to come up over the top of the hill right alongside, or tried to get alongside Bobby Fong, but that momentum carried him out. But again, perfect start for Jake Gagne. He defends going into turn three on that first lap, and look who did slot himself into third. Josh Heron gets through. I was going to say before the start, there's one guy that's going to throw the kitchen sink at this who does not want to see this championship end today, and that is going to be that number two. That is the race that we've got to watch. So basically, if Gagne wins and Heron finishes second, there's still some life left. There's a mathematical it's chance. A mathematical right? chance, yeah. But Heron's going to get after it. He's going to entertain the fans. That's what he's all about. But now you have Jake Gagne, who's having a clear track in front of him, which none of this field likes to see. Correction lean progressive Yamaha. His race strategy is put down five of the fastest laps you possibly can and see where the rest of the field is and where they've sorted themselves out. Oh, but Escalante, right now, oh, big move. so Richie Escalante on that Vision Wheel M4X star Suzuki going around Bobby Fong for position. He set that up a little bit earlier too, Greg. He set that up in a spot. Uh, and, and, he, and he just committed to making that pass. He wants to get to the front, does the 54. So these three guys at the front, See if Heron can do anything with Skultz out of this corner. Be also interested to see somebody's off in the back there. Nolan Lampkin gets back on. Looks like maybe he ran straight in the chicane. But uh, uh, Heron can get that power to the ground on that Ducati. See if he can get anything, get up alongside Skultz before they get to turn one. That's what kind of what I was thinking, especially on new tires. He's going to get up alongside. Is he going to be able to make the pass? There goes Heron up the inside. He gets it turned. Can he hold on to it? Doesn't even come close to running on a racetrack. A nice pass. After a really good start from Matthew Skultz on the number 11. And there's Escalante right behind him. So that Warhorse HSBK Racing Ducati of Josh Heron. You can see the later transition from Heron as he was carrying so much momentum. He couldn't quite get the bike turned over. And that's just another bike length or two for Jake Gagne. But again, this is another really good job by this team to try to get him even more comfortable. I know we're only on the second lap. But Heron essentially was nowhere to be seen on Friday. He was back in ninth during the sessions, and it looked like he was struggling quite a bit. And with each day that passes, each night that goes on, that team continues to find a way to make him comfortable come race day. And we know how good he is once the lights go out. And uh, right now, he's the only one that's even showing that he can keep any pace. Look how tight that Ducati was turned wow. there behind Gagne through that turn nine area, turn 10 area. Heron had mentioned that his crew chief, Simone, spent all night thinking about how to make this bike better. And so in addition to all that thinking the night before, they had race two, which was earlier today. And I'm sure that they made a couple of adjustments to get Heron even more comfortable on the bike. And that also goes to a great, when you start to think about the adjustments they're making, they're getting good information. So it's a combination of information between Josh and his team. Ruben Chaus in the t-shirt next to Josh Heron's crew chief, Simone, with the glasses on his shirt. Ruben Chouse, of course, been around road racing a long time. World Superbike to MotoGP, back to World Superbike. What are you seeing? Yeah, I see him trying to make an adjustment already. See him making, looking at the handlebar, thinking about making an adjustment. The bike's still spinning quite a bit. 42.5 on his first flying lap. But he's close enough. I think if that bike didn't spin quite as much as it did in the kink coming down towards that start finish line, he may have tried to line up Gagne the way he did Skultz the lap prior. So right now looking at it, 42.8 for Gagne, 42.5. For Heron, the other guys are 43-0 for Skultz, 42-6 Escalante. And one guy we haven't spoke about, P.J. Jacobson. There he is, coming back there in fifth place. Didn't probably get the start that he wanted to, but he'll start to try to chip away and move himself forward as well. Yeah, that's what we've seen so far from him this weekend, the 99. Of course, winning at Brainerd International Raceway just a few weeks ago. His first Moto America Medallia Superbike win in his storied career. Being the first American to win the World Super Sport race is PJ Jacobson. There's Bobby Fong on that wrench motorcycles Yamaha R1. A bike that was originally purchased as Gagne's bike last year. And through the team, Ozzy Dave Racing, the chassis, the, basically the frame and the swing arm and a couple other little small bits and pieces are still attacked. But beyond that, ADR has done a great job of developing their own parts, motor, Tank. Oh, oh Heron. Heron. Deep there. So he's going to have to just give up some time. That, like, 
That's, that's, that's a lot. That's a lot that's of a lot time, of time he gave up. but that is more than enough. But you know, good on Josh, because he knows, and he's definitely given up the time that he's, he's lost two spots. So, I mean, that's the, that's a pretty good penalty for him. Yeah. So now he's gonna have to try to move back forward. He just got into that chicane a little bit deep. So the way it works is is that if you do that with the chicane, if you cut the track, cut the chicane in that way, that you've got to figure out how to give up one second in that sector. Another look at it, Jason. Yeah, he just gets in there and he gets to the point where he realizes he's just not gonna make it. So he jumps over the curbing, and you're gonna see him move over to the right and get out of guys' ways so that he lets Skultz go through, and then of course lets Escalante follow him through, and uh, and Heron drops himself right back into the front of P.J. Jacobson. That lap time through on Heron was a 44.3, Greg. So it was almost two seconds slower than the lap that he had done before. Yeah, I think he did the right thing, he even did. though it might have been a little bit longer. It's so hard to judge on the bike itself. You know, like one, two seconds. So Heron should be okay, but we'll wait to see. I'm sure that that is. Yeah, we have official on our timing and scoring screen that is just under investigation. But Hannah has more. What's up, Hannah? Well, Matthew Skoltz has definitely shown improvement throughout the weekend, and deservedly so. The team has been working really hard. I went over there between the races just to see what goes into getting the bike ready for back-to-back -back races like this. And just a quick refresh, they did make a couple changes to give Matt some more help under acceleration. That's where he was losing the most time. So if he can string that together with how strong that he has been in sector two, he's definitely going to be the most competitive that he's been all weekend at the front. Yeah, and so far he's looking good. I, I mean, Donye's not streaking away. I mean, he hasn't really at pit race, Jason, until those later, those later laps. He just does, Gagne, the number one, does such a good job of conserving that tire. And he had mentioned it after race number two. Everyone knew that the temperature was going to increase dramatically. You can see some of the heat rising off the racetrack now that we haven't seen all weekend. And the thought was is that it could make the track a little bit greasier. When I say that, Jay, what am I talking about? Well, the, the track temperature comes up, tires get hotter, and it just makes everything, everything just gets hotter, doesn't it? As Heron goes up underneath Escalante. I kept my eyes on that, Greg, while you were asking me that question. But yeah, so when the track gets a little bit greasier, it just makes the bike harder to ride because of the temperature going up in the track. It's going to make the tires that much hotter as well. So um, Heron, again, nice run up over the top of that turn three. And uh, he's able to slide up underneath Escalante down into that turn three area. And Josh Heron is a hallmark of his Super Sport Championship last year on the Warhorse HSBK Racing Ducati Panigale V2 was tire conservation. And he's actually done a very good job of taking that hallmark and transferring it into the Panigale V4R Superbike. And so with Josh Heron, with that, you know, kind of tool in his toolbox, he might not be too concerned about that. J.D. Beach in sixth place, Jay. Absolutely, what a job he's done as Bobby Fong has gone backwards here a little bit. So we're gonna have a look and see what maybe happened to Bobby here as he's slid back. Last time we saw him, he was back there with uh, ahead of J.D. Beach, but uh, he gets into the chicane. Both riders, is, that, is it J.D. and him both? No, I don't no, think it's JD. That's not uh, JD. It's definitely not JD, because JD's up behind the lead group right now. It was Posh, wow, perhaps Brandon, Brandon Posh, Posh on the Vision Wheel for x star yep. Suzuki. Yep. And now Bobby's just slid back behind Hayden Gillum. So really, a bummer weekend for Bobby, considering the fact that he put this bike on pole position, and at the end of the weekend, might not have the results that he was hoping for uh, at the end of it. So Come back to, at the front, all these guys. impressive is number 11 right yeah, now. They're amazing. Yeah, I mean, when you look at what Matthew's done, and to be honest, the bike looks good. These guys can go testing, and we know they go testing periodically at different tracks. They were Coda a couple weeks ago. But when you come to a track and you have three races in a weekend, it's the best kind of testing you can have because you're putting yourself and your equipment under the, the highest strain that it could be in. That's why I think that you've seen some of these teams chipping away in race two and race three, and look how much closer they are to Gagne now. Richie Escalante has been close to the front all weekend and just so close to podium finishes for Escalante. Something that team desperately wants him as a rider. I mean, Jason, when you talk about riders in this paddock that are talented and still on the come up, Richie Escalante's name comes up all the time. It does, absolutely. And, uh, you know, Richie right now, he sees that podium just beckoning in front of him again. Now, when you look at Matthew Schultz, that bike, honestly, through those S's, looks the best I've seen that bike look all weekend. So whatever that team may have made some small changes, look how he is drawn up onto the back of Gagne in our next shot. And they're going to be coming down 
through this fast hill. The number 11 of Matthew Schultz is all over the back. And a lot of that, Greg, if you watch, especially through turn, after turn seven, that next left in turn eight, he's able to hold the same line as Gagne. And his bike isn't going sideways like I have seen it go all weekend long. So for Matthew, it looks like a little bit easier of a ride. Yesterday's ride in race one looked just hectic and frantic to me. And this one right now looks exactly the opposite. It looks like it's a little easier for him to stay in the position he's in. But I want you to pay attention when we get back to the S's again and just see uh, how good that number 11 looks as Heron now draws up onto the back of Matthew Skultz as well. I think that's really the concern for Matthew Skultz would be Heron behind him because if Heron really catches just a whiff of being able to pass him, he's going to take a shot on him just like he does right there. There's the so that was, that was it. Yeah. And so Heron gets it. And now he's going to try to set sail after Jake Gagne. How much does he have underneath him after having to drift back and uh, and really chip away at this? The guy's but a fighter, man. He, he just is. He's every, just a fighter. Every corner. Yep. And, you know, I think, too, the fact that he let those guys go the way he did mm -hmm. um, kind of kind of told me he's pretty confident in his bike. Uh, there's a couple ways you can look at it. When you, when you have the potential, as you see him roll up underneath Matthew Skultz, Matthew gets that foot in really quickly once he sees the front of that red Ducati coming up alongside of him. But I think that for Heron, you know, he let those guys by. He, he left no question, I don't think, as far as penalties go. And, uh, you know, now he's just chipping away and trying to get back up to, to the back of Gagne. So right now it's half a second after Heron gets by Skultz. And I think Matthew is, like, if, if you're Matthew right now, Jason, you'd like to be in second place, but you know that if you start roughing it up, ooh, his skull starts to spin up the rear wheel a little bit. Oh, and Heron with a mistake. He's in deep. Escalante looking to try to go up underneath the Oh, boy, almost ran out of real estate for the 54 of Escalante. But he doesn't, and onto the front straightaway they go. Heron has a look to his left at his pit board. And here's what that stake. Jake Gagne clinches the championship with a win. And here in third place or worse. And you know Josh knows that. So it's like he's going to do everything he can at all costs to just continue to push this championship as far as it'll possibly go. But uh, looking at that last time by, 43-5 for Gagne, 43-7 for, uh, for Heron. But you know, Jason, knowing, knowing Heron the way that I do know him, I think the thing at the tip of his mind right now is a race win to pay his crew back for all the hard work they've done this weekend to get him from where he was Friday morning to where he is right now. Yeah. And he's going to do everything possible to try to reel in Gagne and make a show of it. But right now, Gagne is a couple of tenths of a second faster. And at the moment, it doesn't look like Heron's able to make any time up on the number one plate of Gagne. And this is where Gagne gets dangerous, Jason, because he's so good at managing even half a second lead and right now it's at seven tenths this grinds out the laps in the middle sections and you hear me talk about that all the time and you know the, the thing is is that when you're running the pace that these guys are running at the front um you know you, you have this big adrenaline rush at the start of a race and you get five laps in and things kind of settle down and you kind of see the guys that you're going to be riding against the ability for Gagne to continue to push on puts a lot of pressure on guys to try to go with him and uh, you know the thing is, is we've just seen a couple of small mistakes we saw a small mistake in this turn last lap from Heron where he ran a little bit wide we saw Skultz get a little bit loose on the exit of the chicane all the while Escalante still trying to close up on the back of them and when you look just behind them PJ Jacobson and how about the 95 still staying on the back of this the full-time dirt tracker JD Beach is sitting there in sixth place running right around the same lap times as the leader 43 for Gagne that time through 44 flat for JD Beach. So, you know, we, get, we got six guys at the front. We got three different manufacturers. And um, yeah, Gagne just trying to control this pace still. And we're getting word no penalty from the earlier track cut over the chicane for Josh Aaron. He definitely gave up a second, a no, more than a second. It's great that race control looked at it and uh, they made a really good decision there, I think. I thought Aaron gave up more than enough. We want riders to be able to use the runoff to their ability if it so is the case. And, Right there, Heron thought better than to turn the bike in and, and uh, avoid a potential crash. And uh, we want riders to be able to use that runoff, Greg, and, um, but not take advantage of it, you know? Yep. J.D. Beach back there. 
The freshman lead progressive Yamaha filling in for Cameron Peterson, who had season-ending wrist surgery, who's here this weekend watching his bike go around the racetrack. Very impressed with the current American flat track racer. He's won a couple races this season. He's got one round left in that championship. And uh, Hannah, what do you know about JD? Well, JD is as disciplined as ever. I talked to him about this weekend, and you know it's not his full-time gig. He's not, he doesn't have anything at stake, and I said that to him, and he said, of course I do. I'm a motorcycle racer. I'm gonna go out there with the intention of doing the best that I possibly can every single time. I don't care if there's points at stake or not. And I mean, what could you expect? anything less from J.D. Beach, but he's also happy to help the, the team gain as much data as they can so that when Cam is ready to get back on this motorcycle, it's ready for him, and they've got some data to refer to at this round next year. And I think it's great. You know, Yamaha has two really great riders that they can put on a bike if either one of those guys get injured. You know, we saw Josh Hayes on it at Brainerd bringing his wealth of knowledge to Superbike, and then, of course, now you see J.D. Beach. It's great to have him back because it looks like P.J. was thinking about making a run here on Escalante now. I'm going to ask you, Greg, because it seems to me now, 1.4 seconds out, it seems like to me that Heron has finally started to fall into maybe a little bit of issues as far as drive grip going forward. His bike isn't going as forward as, as much as it was, and it looks like Skultz has a little bit more pace than Heron, don't you think? Yeah, that's what it feels like right now just from watching. Even though we see Skultz have some really quick and, and, and immediate violent movements on the rear end. It doesn't seem to be something that's affecting his drive as much as Heron's bike just isn't coming off the corner like we've seen the first five laps or so. Yeah, and when you really notice it too, especially as the tires get greasier and they get a little bit off, it's when you come into certain turns, so when they come through this next right and then they go into this next fast left, they're gonna short ship to third. When they flick it back into this right, the off throttle, if you don't feel like you have a bike underneath you, see how much Skultz pulls up onto the back of Heron? So off throttle, it looks to me like Josh maybe he's experiencing the feeling of the bike coming around off throttle. And you see Heron's bike looks so good. I mean, I'm sorry, Skultz's bike looks so good through that little section. He's able to draw up on the back of Heron. But being able to get to the back of him and being able to pass him, as we know, are going to be two different things. Heron knows what's at stake. Ooh. Yeah, Heron knows what's at stake. And it's going to be a fight for Matthew Skultz to get by him. Let's see who gets on the front straightaway the best. I think Skultz getting in there just a little bit too close to Heron just prevented him from being in a position to try to make that pass into turn number one. So they'll stay this way. Gagne with a two-second lead over Heron. Skultz, Escalante, P.J. Jacobson in fifth. J.D. Beach, Hayden Gillum in seventh. Posh, Fong, and Benjamin Smith in tenth place. The number 78 on the Yamaha R1 getting it done. So we know that we saw Bobby Fong as well. Yeah, and like this is what I'm talking about. So Heron to me, I think, and it'd be interesting to talk to him and see, but it's, it's more, these guys can draw up on him a little bit heading into the corner. So it's the stability of being able to tip the bike in and not have that feeling of it wanting to come around on you. And when, as soon as it does that, because you can see he's still trying to get off the turns the best he can, but it's the roll in right now. And Escalante's bike actually is looking really solid too as they're just starting to gap P.J. Jacobson just a little bit. So when you look at it that last time through though, P.J. had the same lap time, maybe just a little bit better than Escalante by a 10. But the first part of the track here, these three are pulling away ever so slightly. The problem for Matthew Skultz is if I pass Josh Heron, what's the next opportunity for Josh Heron to pass me back? Because Heron never lays down. Here he goes. He's going to try him into the chicane. He gets it done. A nice pass. And Heron trying to drive up onto Matthew Skultz. And Skultz already with a couple bike legs. Looked like he might have been in there a little bit yeah, deep. But look he... at that Westby bike. It looks good. See how good that bike was when yes. it came off the turn? It wasn't spinning sideways like we have seen it do over the course of the weekend. And I think some of that is set, of a, set up. Some of it is rider as well. It's up to Matthew to try to keep that tire underneath him. And just because you get to that front spot ahead of Heron, you don't want to roach the tire trying to get away. Now Heron's going to take another shot back at him. You know he's going to as they start entering turn three, but he's just not quite close enough and or doesn't have the confidence to get up underneath with that with that roll off that I'm talking about. Richie Escalante at tight line, getting it on the meat of the tire. It's good to see him really starting to embrace the super bike riding style. The rider for Mexico, Richie Escalante, on that Vision Wheel M4X Star Suzuki, trying to find a way 
around the Warhorse HSBK Racing Ducati of Josh Heron. All the while, Heron's eyes are forward. But for Richie Escalante, Hannah, he is, he's right there this late in the race, and that's been a nice change to see. It's been huge for Richie Escalante, and the biggest thing is that they made improvements to the bike after yesterday's race to make him much more confident on the brakes. And in, in race two earlier today, he was feeling so strong that he knew if he had a shot at this podium, he was gonna take it. It's within sniffing distance once again, and you better believe that Richie's gonna do everything he can. It's been long overdue for him, and he has been counting the, the races since the last time that he stood on the podium. Nothing better than that feeling, especially in his second year in this Superbike program. He's got a lot of work to do, and he's got one bulldog of a racer in front of him. Josh Heron is feisty. <laughs> the thing you got to love about him, though, is he'll absolutely he love takes it. a shot back all the time. But Escalante is hungry for this, and uh, you know the thing is, is that is it? It's going to take everything for Escalante to really figure out the the best spot that he's going to be able to park that Suzuki up underneath Heron. And you know, watching it, I'm not exactly sure where that's going to be. When they get up over turn 14, as you look at live championship right now, the race ended the way it did. We have a three-time consecutive Superbike champion. So for Escalante getting back to it, Greg, when I watch him even coming out of turn 14, he gains a lot of time through the middle of 14, but then he's not able to get close enough going into the chicane where Skultz made that pass. So I just, I'm not sure exactly where Escalante is going to be able to pull this one off, yeah. where, where it's going to happen. And PJ Jacobson making up a couple tenths of a second as well behind them is the 99 on the Titler Cycles BMW. All the while, there's the 95. The fan favorite of J.D. Beach. 34 wins in Moto America in his career, including one Superbike win back in 2020. What a talented field of motorcycle yeah. race winners we have, right? Yeah. From Gagne with 37, Skultz has got five, Heron's got nine, Bobby Fong has three, P.J. Jacobson has one. If Cameron Bobier was here, he'd have 59. I was going to say, we're <laughs> missing Cam. So look at, again, the roll up on the back of Heron. The Suzuki doesn't quite have the speed to match the Ducati in the last little part of this to allow Ales Escalante to get up alongside. And that's the thing, it's just a little bit off. Look at how good. He might try him in this last corner, Greg, because he got through that chicane so well. But again, Heron's just going to be really good on the brakes and hard to get by. So for Escalante, he sees the places where the speed is there, but it's just, he's a little tiny bit off mile and a hour wise in that fast kink. Just the bike control from Escalante. And I think really this race could be the one, one of these races for Escalante where he really starts to just increase his confidence. And watching the lap times, Matthew Skultz has been able to kind of hold that same pace that Gagne has got right now. It was 2.7, it went to 2.6 this last time by. Matthew Skultz was the only rider in the 43s at a 43.9. So Matthew's bike actually, with four laps to go, is looking really, really solid. As you can see, he's getting well away now from this battle for third and fourth. This is, again, the best I've seen that thing look. And then you've got these two guys. And it's just going to be a matter of, you know, where's this shot going to be taken? I think that Escalante, if he can get close enough, it could happen in a turn like turn 12, Greg. It's where we saw him go up underneath Bobby Fong earlier. So look how sideways they are as they go through all these S's. See how close he is right now? So they're going to get through this next left, then a fast right. And if he can get close enough, he might try something with Heron into here. But it's going to be a tough one. You see Heron blocking that, that pass even as they were going through. Boy, that Ducati finishes the corner well, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, but the Suzuki looks amazing, too. Look at how much he draws up on the back. I mean, it literally, Escalante's roll speed through the middle of that is really sacrificed, but he can't get close enough through that kink, like I said, to do anything with Heron right in this spot. I don't know how. And he gets through there so well. He does. Oh, is he going to go up the inside? Is he going to try him? Oh, he thought about it's, it for a second. <laughs> but Heron's so smart, he just keeps going down to the apex. Is he going to try to outdrive him? No. But even Escalante's bike looks better. So it'd be fun to talk to the M4 guys and find out what little tweaks. you got to remember, the last time we saw this bike before the race, it was in the grass and turned three on, on what the last lap of race two. So they did a, a quick turnaround to get this bike back into a position to give their rider enough confidence and probably made some tweaks to the bike as well. So there goes our first place rider, Gagne, Matthew Skultz, and this is the battle for third, the final podium position between a Ducati rider 
a Suzuki rider, and a BMW rider. And of course, let's not forget, JD Beach is also oh. right back there. There it is, going up the inside. Dos Escalante, a little bit wide for Heron. And the Vision Wheel M4X Star Suzuki rider gets it done for the moment. But here comes the fight back. No. Man. So Escalante holds on to it, at least for this corner. What a beautiful pass. Very crafty, I'd have to say. Haven't seen too much of that. Look at how sideways Escalante's got that bike now as he rolls out of that turn eight area. So now he's got to put his head down. And this is where we've seen him be pretty good. But look at Heron. He just gets right on the back of you, and he's not going to let you go. But. This is the section I'm curious to see if Escalante can still roll away. Now he doesn't have that carrot in front of him through this next right-hander. You can see he's, he's able to keep that pace. And I don't think Heron will be close enough as they get down into that chicane to return the favor. As you can see here, Escalante's pulled that gap. Now he opens up the radius of that turn a little bit on the entry so that he can cut it back a little bit more as they head up that hill. And you can see here he's trying to get on the gas. Heron sees him there now. But Escalante makes a nice, smooth, clean pass. Well done. You have to admire the patience of Richie Escalante as well. It didn't look like he had any panic in him to say, look, you know, sometimes riders would say, uh, I'm frustrated behind this other rider. I got to get by him. And Escalante looked like a cool customer. Yeah, and this is the spot where he's got to defend really hard. Once he gets up out of this corner here and gets over the crest, this is where Heron's bike has actually been pretty good. And it's been good enough to get him to pull up alongside. Ooh. And it's exactly what it, you saw, it, didn't you? Yeah, I did. And it's going to allow Heron to maybe get up alongside. Here comes Josh Heron. He's going to fight back. He gets it done. And that was all started, as Jason said, over the hill. And it just looked like the part of the racetrack that Escalante was on created some instability on his GSXR 1000. So Heron back to third. This is more for position, not implications in the Gagne Championship, because staying in third spot for Josh Heron would still get Jake Gagne the number one plate again. Yeah, it's just such a letdown for Escalante. The bike just got so loose over the top of turn three that it allowed Heron the momentum to carry on past him and get alongside of him for the braking there, uh, actually up over turn two, and allowed him to get up alongside of him as they enter turn three. So now Escalante has got to try all over again. He's got to try to find the spot. And, you know, I don't think he's going to be able to pull off the same pass that he did to Heron just now in turn five. So it's going to be a new place that Escalante is going to have to go to work. You know, Greg, it might be the last corner like we talked about earlier. He's so good through the chicane. He might just have to do like a little dive bomb move into that last corner. But they're going to be coming to the white flag this next time by. Look yeah. how good he gets through there. Escalante looking for his first career Medallia Superbike podium. And it's so close. As for this guy, Jake Gagne, as he comes to take the white flag and one final lap. He's in a position right now, Jason, where he could wrap up his third Medallia Superbike title in a row and have a nice, comfortable sail off into the sunset for the final two rounds of racing. Matthew Skultz, a Yamaha rider, Westby Yamaha, put himself in a position to ensure that Gagne could win this number one plate. But P.J. Jacobson going up the inside of Escalante, and that thwarts Escalante's oh. plans to try to get on the podium. So the 99 Titler Cycle Bike gets it done. Is Escalante going to fight back? No, he can't. On the final lap, there he goes up the inside. So good job by Escalante to try to get that back. They are battling it out. Front wheels in the air, the both of them. And For Escalante, fourth place. unreal. The heart that he's showing right now. And you know, when they go back and they look at this race, that team, they're gonna know it's up over that rise that the 54 struggled to keep these guys behind him and not, you know, that, that's the place. But to fight back the way he did immediately on PJ Jacobson, Tremendous riding from Escalante here. And you got to admire what Josh Heron has done. Absolutely. He was falling back. He took the opportunity to go fast past Escalante when that bike got unsettled. And now Heron is just turning the screws and inching away on this final lap of Medallia Superbike race number three. As Josh Heron looks like he is in a really good spot for another podium this season. As Richie Escalante going through the chicane for the final time. Here we go, the number one plate of Jake Gagne has a look over his shoulder, onto the front straightaway, he'll go. The checkered flag waves, he does the hat trick and wraps up the national championship with this third place finish from Josh Heron and a great ride by Matthew Skultz to finish in second. Richie Escalante holds on to fourth over PJ Jacobson and JD Beach.
in sixth place. As Gagne turns around and looks at Skoltz <laughs> and he says, you get second? And he said, yeah, and he's like, all right. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, that was a great ride from Matthew Skoltz. I'm bummed we didn't get to see more of him towards the end of that race. The battle for third was so good, but a tremendous effort from him. And three-time Superbike champion Jake Gagne along with his teammate J.D. Beach there. I think a lot expected this at the beginning of this season as Cameron Bobier came back and we saw, you know, extra speed for Matthew Skoltz and we knew that the Vision Wheel and 4XR Suzuki team at the beginning of the season with Tony Elias and, and Richie Escalante, there was just so much anticipation. But I think the story of this championship for Jake Gagne is not just the speed, is the fact that he was consistent. Only one non-podium finish this whole season so far for Gagne, he scored zero points. Every finish he's had, he's been on the podium, Jason. And that's the way, the consistency. He hasn't won every race. No, he didn't it brought some to. new challenges. Like you say, the Tyler's team really stepped up with their BMWs, with both PJ Jacobson and, and Cameron Bobier. So uh, this guy had a different way of trying to win this championship and that consistency, as you say, Greg, paid off. Jake Gagne asking Matthew Skultz how he finished and getting the good news. And we'll talk to him when we come back to Pittsburgh International Race Complex. Triple champion, Jake Gagne, three in a row. And what a remarkable three years it has been. And this year, Roger, claiming the championship with two full rounds yet to go in a championship that saw the return of Cameron Bobier, <laughs> uh, the, the resurgence of P.J. Jacobson, the, the experience uh, uh, of uh, Richie Escalani coming in here, and the outright speed of Josh Heron when he was on, and Jake is able to defend it. And this moment to me was very, very <laughs> Look at that. Watch it. He looks. He's looking for skulls. Oh, yeah. And watch this. He, he, uh, he asks him, were you second? <laughs> he's waiting. He's like, dang, he's, was that where is Josh yeah. just went that by? Was Josh. So I thought he was there second. There it is. Yeah. Are you second? He gets the big nod from Skull to watch this reaction. Yes. I mean, he knew that there was a good chance he's going to win the title. But as a rider, you know, you always think about the worst. Yeah. You know, oh, what if yeah. I go to Co last year at Coda? They had a couple problems with the. You know, the, the engine, so yeah. I'm sure that was playing in his head. So even though he had a good points lead, you know, you want to sure. wrap that up as soon as possible and go on to the, you know, those last uh, last two races, you know, playing on house money. Absolutely. Absolutely. I like that, playing on house money. But just that moment, that recognition, uh, you could just see the release of all of that, you know, how hard he's fought. And we heard Greg White talking about it. You know, in this season thus far, uh, he's only once been off the podium and that was a mechanical where he didn't finish and that's it and this has been the the year i think probably you know why he's so excited is he really had to dig in this year yeah, he i did. mean the competition has really stepped up he didn't win all the the races as easily as he did the last couple years he yep. had some good battles he had to you know take second a couple times and not throw it down the road so for him it was a you know a great season yeah. great ride and you know he's just it's just awesome to see what he's doing he's deserved it yeah well i mean he his evolution too i mean you think of the pressure that pj put under him at brainerd in race one uh and he fended it off no mistakes then when pj came through the second race and jake said you know what it's too much risk for me to try and, and win this i just want to get the points that decision could have just paid off right here as well uh yeah it, absolutely remarkable three years for jake gagne and an incredible moment for him here. Gagne over the Yamaha of Matthew Skoltz, and then Josh Heron in that third place for Josh sealed it for Jake, and Josh fought with everything he had to try and keep this championship alive. Huge kudos to Josh Heron. But for Jake Gagne, three wins here at Pitt and three straight championships in Moto America. Medallia Superbike coverage is brought to you by Medallia, the pioneer in customer and employee experience. By Dunlop, the official tire of the Moto America Championship Series. By Steel Commander Corp, a leading steel building manufacturer offering expertise, innovation, and a dedication to quality. And by Geico Motorcycle. Visit geico.com to see how easy covering your ride can be. 
Celebration time for the number one plate, Jake Gagne, after a stellar performance that net, nets him a 1.8 second margin of victory here at Pittsburgh International Race Complex. And Jason, did you think at the beginning of this season that we would see Jake Gagne wrap this thing up two races early? No chance. I mean, I didn't even think going into this weekend. It wasn't even really in my thought process. And uh, But he comes here and does the, tr uh, you know, the triple. Yep. And uh, a couple guys had some bad luck. But Matthew Skoltz, 1.8 seconds back, really kept him honest. Josh Heron, Escalante, P.J. Jacobson, J.D. Beach just kept getting better all weekend. Gillum Fong, Benjamin Smith are going to be ninth. Let's get down to Hannah with our winner. Congratulations being exchanged between Jake and J.D. Beach. I've got Bill Combo here from the AMA presenting the number one plate to your AMA FIM North America Medallia Superbike Champion for 2023. Three in a row for Jake Gagne. Jake, three race wins on the weekend. When we were heading into this race weekend, did you expect to have the championship wrapped up by the time we left here? Not at all. Not at all. Um, I didn't hear anything about it. The team didn't talk about it. I didn't think about it. We just wanted to try to get some wins. And I saw it on the pit board on the way by, and I figured, uh, wow, yeah, I'm kind of speechless. It's just something I didn't expect leaving the track today. Um, hats off, man. Fresh and lean, progressive attack performance. This whole crew, uh, it's been a challenging year, but we've learned a lot as a rider, as a team. Um, I just got such an amazing group of people. I get to ride this amazing R1, and uh, whew. Life is good. Like I said, a little unexpected, but thanks to the whole crew, um, attack performance, Arai helmets, Alpine stars. I know uh, luck kind of swung our way in, in some of these times, but I'll take it and it feels good. And it's going to feel good going in these last couple rounds. Uh, battle with these guys and not have to worry about this thing. <laughs> You know, looking back on the entire season, there were some tough days and there were some great days. Is there anything that really will stand out to you as you reflect on this third championship? Uh, man, I mean, um, it's been different the last couple of years. You know, we weren't always the fastest guy out there. Um, but, man, I think we were pretty consistent. This Yamaha held up awesome as always. And, um, you know, even if we weren't able to win a race, we brought it home. We got a lot of podiums. And it's just it's amazing when the, the competition is so stacked. This field is getting gnarlier every year. Uh, whew, it's going to be a hell of a fight next year, and we've still got some more racing to go, so it's going to be a lot of fun. And hats off to these guys, the Yamaha. Um, again, all the fans out here, it's awesome to do it at Pittsburgh. I love this track. It's one of my favorite places we go to all year. So shout out to all my friends and family watching at home. Uh, yeah, good day. Like I said, unexpected, so feels good. Congratulations, Jake Gagne on three race wins this weekend and three championships. Moving on over to second place today, Matthew Skoltz. Huge step up for you on the weekend as a whole. Are you feeling content with this performance as we head into the final rounds? Yeah, I mean, um, uh, anytime you can finish second in this field, you have to be happy. You know, the, in the first race earlier on today, I was struggling a little bit with the rear grip, made a couple of TC changes, and that really helped me to kind of drive through the middle of the corner and start rolling up onto the guys. Um, but yeah, I mean, um, obviously Bobby had a big crash uh, um, early on. Hope he's doing doing great. Well done to Gagne, wrapping up another championship. Heron, he's one of the hardest riders, you know, um, uh, out there in the Superbike field. So I'm just happy to be mixing it up with these boys. A huge shout out to the Westby guys, and we'll, we'll come out swinging at a Coda. Did well there last year, so looking for some more podiums. Coda, New Jersey, ahead of us. Two two tracks that you're notoriously pretty good at. What are the chances we can see you get a Superbike win before the season is over? I mean, I've managed to get at least one Superbike win since maybe back in 19, so I'm kind of hoping to keep that streak going. Uh, Coda and Jersey are pretty good tracks for me, so just going to try to hang on to Gagne and just try to fight for the win the last couple of laps. Congrats, Matt. Thank you so much. And rounding out your Medallia Superbike podium, Josh Heron, who fought valiantly throughout that race. It was definitely a tough one, to say the least. Take us through those battles you had out there, and what was it that gave you the advantage to, to clinch this third-place finish? Uh, my guys are just working really hard all weekend. You know, we, we struggled the first day, first two days, and, uh, man, everybody just worked so hard. Danny, Logan, Simone, Caleb, all the guys on the team, Kyle, Everybody, man, it's a, it's a huge team effort over there at HSBK Racing, and uh, I'm just so grateful to be here, grateful to be here with my son and my wife, and, and just just getting podium finishes. You know, hopefully we get further up as the season goes on, but uh, with how the weekend started, I'm really happy for this. So thank you to the whole team. Thank you to Taven. Thank you to Five Star Equipment, and uh, yeah, just everybody for helping out, and uh, thanks to the fans for being so supportive. We'll see you at Coda. Congratulations, Josh Heron and his son Griffin, guys. Yeah, it's awesome to see. He dug deep for that one, but it wasn't enough to keep the championship alive as Gagne holds on to his number one plate. We'll have more on the other side.
Well, you just heard uh, Jake Gagne say, I love coming to this place. It's one of my favorites. Just some quick, uh, and again, these are rough stats on my part, but uh, in the last three years, there have been seven races here for Superbike. Jake's won all seven. He said five fast laps in two of the three poles. That's eh, not a bad record. No, not at all. <laughs> I can see why he likes it. Here we go, man. And I mean, just, you know, the Yamaha works really good around here, and I think it suits uh, Jake's style as well, you know, just really smooth on the bike, the gas. You know, earlier in the race, you know, the other guys were staying pretty close to him. We thought, man, are they going to, you know, go with him? And then he just st slowly started chipping away, and, you know, he's just put together a great year. And Richie Escalante, that was a great ride by him. I know he's going to be a little disappointed to be that close to the podium, yep. but he showed a lot of speed, you know, finished the race strong, good stuff, you know what I mean? Just yep. really put together a really good race. Looked like maybe he had a little bit more pace toward the end, but just couldn't make the the pass stick, but I think that was the race that, you know, we've been waiting for. And yeah, he's, exactly. Like I said, he's going to be disappointed to be so close to the podium, but he should be happy with that ride. The team should, you know, they're making huge strides. Obviously, they got the bike working really well. This truck's really hard to get the bike to, to work good, yeah. you know, with all the yeah. elevation and the heat, trying to get, you know, the grip. We've heard everybody talk about, you know, getting traction, and, you know, it's really hard to do that. So him and the team just did a great job this weekend getting, uh, getting Richie up there. Well, you could see that Dunlop was cooked near the end of the race, and his bike control, uh, he just didn't lose speed and was able to, uh, uh, you know, put it up and uh, put up some numbers. Another guy, obviously, Bobby Fong, going to be a little bit disappointed. Uh, he just showed some speed. Uh, quick, uh, Matthew Skoltz, you know, the margin of victory at the end of that was within two seconds. And for the, what, the first third of that race, Matt was sticking once he got by, uh, you know, he in that duel with, uh, with uh, Josh Heron, uh, he was right there. I mean, that's the closest we've seen Matthew and really anybody to Jake in the early laps this year. Yeah, that was for him. I mean, even when he was behind Josh, when he's able to make that pass, he broke that group and, yeah. you know, put in some really good laps. So that was, a, you know, Matt's got, you know, the middle of the season hasn't gone great for them. I mean, they've yeah. admitted it. But this race this weekend, this third Superbike race for him is probably the best, one of the best we've seen from him all year and, and was great how he could do those lap times there toward the end of the race. Yeah, no, it was superb, no question. And just to give you an idea here, you know, there were three races here this weekend, and even for Josh Heron, who is not in the, you know, the championships done now, there were three fast laps available. He got two of them, and arguably he started off Friday way off the pace. So uh, that man dug deep. Yep, and, you know, just showing that experience yeah. and, and the team and not giving up. And, you know, the weekend didn't start out great, but they dug in and just got faster every time they were on the track. Yep, you see Matthew Skoltz and all the riders down there spending some time with the fans and doing selfies and the like. What a race, what a season, what a championship. Back here at Pitt Race in Wampum, Pennsylvania. As we look at the point standings, there's only 100 points remaining in this championship and that's why Jake Gagne has wrapped it up and what a way to do it seven days away from turning 30 years old is Jake Gagne and he gives himself the greatest birthday present of all we'll be back as our coverage continues from Wapham Pennsylvania And how about giving a shout out to the guy standing next to Jake up there on the podium, uh, Richie Stamboli and that attack yeah. performance team. Uh, you know, there was a period there when it was obvious they they weren't the fastest bike out there. Uh, they had to work at it, and they gave Jake a bike here that was absolutely outstanding. Yeah, and, and not only that, the last three years, to win three titles in a row, I mean, yeah. that's not. And then from there was Cambobie before that. Yeah. So, I mean, they've got a lot of, a lot of titles, and, you know, the team, some couple tough races for them this year, you know, with some things going on with the bikes and stuff, and they were able to to overcome that. And uh, you know, that's just a sign of good team. You know, be able to yeah. overcome those things, and you know, it's just great to see and great to see all these young fans here. Some of these kids are probably to to be dreaming of being in Jake's shoes one day. Absolutely, they absolutely uh, could be doing that. So, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, just uh, absolutely remarkable, and uh, just some great racing here as well. Uh, we've been able to chat uh, and talk a little bit about our thoughts uh, about that race. Let's go down and check in with Michael Hill, third member of our team. Uh, it's the last race he's going to be at with us for this season due to conflicts with World Superbike work that he does. But uh, you know, just a few thoughts there, Michael, on Jake Gagne and on this championship this year. 
Yeah, impressive stuff, isn't it? To win one championship is impressive. To do a back-to-back -back job is uh, even more impressive. And uh, he really has just been uh, unstoppable this year, hasn't he? Uh, there's been several rounds and several races, though, when he has been kept honest. We've seen, uh, obviously, other riders winning races, but overall, consistently fast. Uh, he is the man to beat, and, and he goes into 2024 once again with uh, the target on the back. But uh, let's not uh, play down the performance from Matthew Skoltz in that race. Uh, superb effort, superb weekend for him, looking really, really strong. And uh, also, uh, a really, really good job by Josh Herring as well. So, uh, yeah, re really good race and uh, looking forward to seeing what the last couple of rounds will do. Uh, so, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I agree. And, uh, you know, one of the things Jake often says in press conferences and interviews, I don't worry about the championship. I just I'm just focused on racing. Uh, what did he do as soon as he got the checkered <laughs> flag, looks back and tries to figure out who was uh, who finished where behind him. And then in the interview says, I'm glad we got that behind us. We can just go in, uh, in you know, the last few rounds. And as you put it so eloquently, uh, play with house money. And I think. You know, I think riders kind of tell themselves that, so they try to force themselves. You know, if you say it enough, then hopefully, you know what, maybe you'll start believing that. But you know they they think about the points and the results, and, you know, Coda's going to have that long back straightaway yeah. next race, and uh, it's going to play into some other teams' favors, I believe. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we know the BMW coming out of a tight turn like 11, a tight turn like 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 22 there. Uh, yeah, the power of those BMWs are going to be a real factor there as well. So, uh, But as you can see, uh, we're getting ready. Next race out will be our Junior Cup, and that will be the final race of this uh, great weekend of activity here, the Superbikes at Pittsburgh for Moto America and uh, watching some of the riders getting ready. But before we do that, uh, we want to hear one more time from uh, the gentleman next door to us here, Greg White and Jason Pridmore, as they wrap up the coverage of Medallia Superbike. This is what we have left in the championship, Circuit of the Americas, September 8th through the 10th. Then we go to New Jersey Motorsports Park. Can't wait to see how this all plays out. The gloves are off for Jake Gagne, and he can ride free as can the rest of the field. Three Medallia Superbike races this weekend. It's been entertaining. We crowned at number one for Hannah and Jason. I'm Greg. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll see you in a couple weeks. So we're down here on the grid then getting ready for the final race of the day. It is time for the Junior Cup. And uh, just on my